Hi folks, welcome back to the shop here at Project Pine Hills. Today we're talking about this Thermal Master Infrared Thermal Imaging Camera. The model number is Thor001. Now Thermal Master sent this to me. I'll have a link in the video description so you can check it out. All right, here's how this Thermal Master Infrared Thermal Imaging Camera arrived. You can see it's got the Thermal Master Thor001 Infrared Thermal Imaging Camera here. It's got a nice large three and a half inch IPS screen. We're gonna set this aside and we'll check that out here in a moment. It also includes a macro lens here. That's for getting images really up close, like with printed circuit boards, things like that. It also includes a charging cable here. It's a nice braided cable. It also can transmit data and has a USB-A to USB-C type connector. So that's everything that comes in this case. All right, let's take a look at this infrared camera. Now, you can see where maybe it gets its name. It looks a little bit like the Thor hammer, but it's made of ABS plastic. It's got a rubber overmold here on the handle, and it's also got sort of a rubber overmold here around the lens as well. You can feel that, I can kind of flex that. It's got some metal here in the bottom. I think this is aluminum. Got a lanyard loop here, and it also has a quarter 20 threaded screw there. So you could take this and thread it onto your typical tripod. Just spin that right on and stand this guy up. Now it's got eight gigabytes of internal memory, but if you look at the top here, you'll see there's a port here for an SD card and it comes with an additional 32 gigabytes on this micro SD card. Also includes a USB-C port, that's for transferring data or charging up this camera. It has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery in it that's capable of running this device for 10 and a half hours. So I'm gonna step through some of the features of this device. I'm not gonna go over everything, but I'm gonna walk you through the basics. Now when this arrives, it'll be charged out of the box, but it's good to charge it up and top it off. You'll see here there's a red switch on the front. That's for this infrared camera lens cover. So if we just flip this switch here, it opens up that lens cover. You see it's got that sort of mirrored looking infrared camera lens there. And then what you're gonna do is hold down this on and off button and we'll wait till the screen starts to turn on. You can see it says Thermal Master on the screen and it's gonna boot up. So when it comes up, now you can see it's showing the thermal imaging. So there's a closer look at the display here. So it's got a lot of advanced features for its price point. You got your mode button here. We have a light button. I'll show you that here in a second. It can take pictures and video and you can also take voice notes or voice annotation. And this is sort of a return button here. So before we look at that, let's look at the business end of the camera. So on the front end here, you'll see it has that infrared camera there. It's sort of that mirrored lens. This is just a regular camera lens here for pictures and video. This is a white light here. I can press this light button on the other side. If you see right here, it looks like a light here. If we just tap that button, it's gonna turn on that white light on the front. If I tap it again, it turns it off. If I press and hold that button, you'll see it turns on a red laser over here. Press and hold, it's gonna turn that red laser off. And that laser is a class two red laser. And you can see that class two red laser is not super bright right there is what it looks like there, but you can still see it. So I can help with pointing things out or, or knowing exactly where the camera's pointing. But you see this camera has a very sharp display, very high resolution imagery there. You can see my hand there on camera shows up as the hottest object it, it can see there, but really good looking display. By comparison, I've got another camera here. This is the Top Don TC004 Mini. We've had this on the channel before as well. Now this Top Don is great because it's portable, right? Highly portable. You can see it's a lot smaller than this Thermal Master. But look at the difference in the displays there and in the contrast, right? You can see my hand on there. You have a lot higher resolution display on the Thermomaster Thor. Of course, it's a lot larger as well. They work in a similar way where they show the center point and the max and the min temperatures on the screen. And of course, with this top on, you don't get that option to be able to jump in here and see just the regular camera display. The top down only has an infrared camera in it, doesn't have a regular camera in it. So that's really nice for documenting things here on that Thermal Master. But there is a difference in size, right? So if you're looking for portability, just to get something really quick, this one comes in handy. If you're looking for a lot better display and a lot more features, just a lot more advanced features with that Thor 001. Now this has a nice, large, high resolution display. As you can see here, there's the battery indicator for the camera itself. There's a few things going on here. It's constantly scanning for the high and low temp. So that green pointer you see there is showing the lowest temp that it spots in the infrared camera's lens. And if you look at the red arrow, which is down here, that shows the highest temp. And you can see that min max at any time on the screen over here where it shows max and min right there. If you look here to the right, it'll show you what that red pointer is showing at any point in time. So this red arrow is finding the hottest temperature and it's always right here. The temperature in the center is showing what the white point sees. So it's good if you're looking for the highest temperature in the frame to be looking for that temperature over here where the red crosshairs is pointing. This guy here is a hotspot option. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. That's how you can connect your smartphone to this device. This is showing all the ranges of the temperatures. Now, if I just tap the on-off button here real quick, it'll go into standby mode, tap it again, it comes out of standby mode. If we hold that button down, it will turn the camera off. Now, the zoom is shown up here in the right-hand corner. You can see right now it's not zoomed, it's 1X. But if you just press the right side of this pad, you'll see the zoom goes up to 2X, 4X, 
and even 8x. And if we just press it again, we go back to 1x. Now, if you press the center button, we have lots of menu options here. You can see that I can scroll across the menus there. There's view mode. We go over, there's palette. There's settings. Real quick, let's look at measurement. And you can turn on and off these spots, right? So we have that center spot that's showing right there. We can go over to the red spot or the green spot, turn any of them off that we'd like. Or you can go over here and you can set these custom spots, right? And you can read about more about that in the manual. Set all those different custom spots. If I scroll over one more, we have view mode. If I press to the right, I can switch over here just to the regular camera that's on here. It has a very high resolution camera. We can switch over to fuse. It kind of fuses the regular camera and the infrared camera together. And then we have picture in picture, right? We can see what's showing up on the infrared camera versus the regular camera. And there's a new mode here that I see. I did update the firmware using the SD card. And you can see now it has this iMix option that wasn't there before. And we have one more option here that's uh, the dual spectrum fuse and registration. So you can set that there. And then for view mode, we can tap back to the left and go all the way over to infrared. That's where we want to keep this. Pick infrared, press the button again. And now we can go over to the palette menu. You'll see right now it's set to iron. That's the one I think it's set to out of the box. Rainbow looks really neat. That's the one right beside it. But there's several options here. You have white hot. That means that wherever it sees hot on the camera, it's going to show white. If we go over here, it's black hot. That means anywhere that it's hot, it's going to show black. You see my hand is showing up darker there on camera. And they have lava, lots of different modes. Iron, rainbow. I really like rainbow. Rainbow HC. And we got RDGY. Warning red. Now that's going to show just if something's really hot, it'll show up as red. And then we switch over to warning blue. Same thing for blue, right? Anything that's really high temp is going to show up as blue. But I do really like iron and rainbow. Those are the two options that I like. I'm going to pick rainbow there for now. And if we go to the last menu option here, it's settings, right? So we can pick settings and lots of different things here. And I see the first thing it goes to is measurement parameters. They see you're supposed to set that every time you're using this if it's a different environment. So a lot of non-metallic surfaces are going to be set by default to 0.95. So you probably want to leave it there for wood and paint and things like that. Then they have atmospheric temperature here. You're supposed to set this to wherever the current ambient temperature is. It goes up and down by 1.8 degrees. It's like the closest thing that I have here in terms of the temp in the shop right now is about 64.9. It's about 65 degrees in the shop right now. And then the distance from which you're measuring whatever surface you're trying to get a temp on. So you got all these different options in here. Temp measurement gear. So you can pick your, your option there. You could also select auto mode down here at the bottom if you want. I've been trying that out here lately. So we can check that out. And then we we have temperature scale mode. If you select that, it goes into this screen. If we press again in the center, it's going to ask you to confirm because it will disable super resolution. You want to confirm that. I'm going to select cancel and just go back. And you can set these different alarm settings to have an alarm at different temperature sets. They got photo settings, which is kind of neat. You can have it auto save images if you want. By default, it prompts you if you want to save. So I like the fact it prompts you, but you could set it to auto save. You're taking a lot of pictures and you don't want it to prompt. We'll look at that here in a minute. Got an isotherm setting there. Got real time, super resolution. I've got that switched at one. I think it might've been off by out of the box. I don't remember. And then we go down to video settings. You know, you can have it also, you know, auto save and turn on silent recording if you want. So you have those two options there. Right now, I don't have it set to auto save. I have it prompting me to save video. We'll look at that here in a second. Index mode, macro mode. And that macro mode, you'll need that if you're shooting up close. We can look at that lens really quickly. If you pull this back, all right, so when we look up close here, so here's that macro lens it came with and it fits right over the front here. You see, we can just put it, kind of center it there, and it clips here on the side where the logo is at here. See this little clip right here? It's got one on the other side as well. So we just pull both of those on. Now it's got that macro lens on there, and then you would just switch this to macro mode right there. We just switched it on, and then we can back out of this, and you can see what that looks like on the screen there. Okay, so you have that option for circuit boards and things like that. So jumping back into settings here, this is where you're going to want to go probably right away is unit settings. You can set it to Celsius, Kelvin, or Fahrenheit. I've got it on Fahrenheit. Also the same for distance. You can, you can go in here and set it to feet or meters, your choice. We'll back out of that here real quick. And then it has Wi-Fi settings, screen display, just a lot of different options there. You can turn all these things on and off. You want the hotspot icon or... I basically have everything on right now, except for the time display, unit type, all that stuff shows up there. So that's what screen is. Auto power off. Of course, you can set different times there. And you have system settings here. I mean, it just goes on and on. You can reset the factory defaults if you want. And let's look here. There's update. Now, update's pretty straightforward. I did go and do this. If you press again, it's going to try to upgrade that. This means you're supposed to select it, right? If I hit it again, now it's going to say SD card detected. Now it's showing update and it will update the firmware if it sees the update on that SD card inside the unit. You see it's upgrading the system now. So it did find an update there that I put on the SD card from their website. And you can see it's upgrading the firmware.
Now update succeeded, it's successful, it's gonna reboot, and you see it's booting back up. Now you see the screen's coming back in, so we're booting right back up to the device. So it's that easy to, to update the device. And they give instructions on exactly what folder you're supposed to put the updates in on that SD card. And then going back up to those Wi-Fi settings, they say there's a couple of different ways to set up the Wi-Fi. This is how it's set up by default. It's the only way I got it to work. So this is switched on, and that means that this device is gonna act sort of as a Wi-Fi router or a hotspot, and you can connect your smartphone to it. And what you'll do is bring up your phone's Wi-Fi settings. You can see here I picked that same network name that the device is broadcasting out, that Thor 001-6632. So we're connected to it, and then they have an app that you can launch that's called Thermal Smart. You see if I bring that app up, you can see it here. I can just touch this device list, you see the device there. I'm gonna tap connect. It's gonna bring up, you see the same thing on the screen now. So if I back this screen out, now it shows everything that shows up on that infrared camera, right? So if I move the camera around, you'll see the view changes on your phone. And the great thing about this is I can choose to record from the smartphone, right? So right now it's set to picture. If I take a picture, you see it snaps the shot there real quick of what's on the screen. If I pick the video option, I can now record what's on the screen, right? It's recording on the smartphone here right now, what we're seeing on the camera. Hit stop, saves that recording. Now it's all on the iPhone. I don't have to take it off the SD card that's on the infrared camera. And you see if I touch that, now we can go in here and we can see that video playback or we can look at the pictures as well on here. So it's pretty nice it has that smartphone integration, makes it quicker, I think, to get some of the images you need. Now, if we're just working on the device itself here, it has a trigger here on the front. Okay, so if I pull that trigger, it's gonna take a picture, right? Just pull the trigger very quickly. There it's taking a picture, and it's got a save option here, it defaults to, so if I press this select mode button here, it's gonna save that picture, right? So I can just do that real quick, saved it. But if I take this trigger and I pull it and hold it, right, I'm gonna pull, and hold the trigger, you'll see that's gonna put it into record mode and it starts recording. You can see the record counter here at the bottom turns on and then if I just press it again, it's gonna stop recording, immediately prompt if I wanna save. Remember, I could set this to auto save, but I've told it to prompt me, so I picked that, now it's saved it locally. So now we have this play button over here, I can press the play button and we can see the videos we recorded or the pictures we've taken. So if I just tap this trigger again, it'll take a picture. So let's take a picture here real quick. So it snaps the picture. It asks me if I want to save it or not. I'm going to save that picture. Save successful. We hit the play button. And what I like about this device is if I go over here to that picture we just snapped, notice it takes two pictures, right? We have one that shows the infrared picture and one that shows the camera image. So by default, it snaps both images, both the camera image and the infrared image. So you capture both of those. So it's really nice for documentation. If you're trying to show someone what's going on with the system you're diagnosing, whether you're doing HVAC, mechanical, electrical, you're gonna have both a regular picture and an infrared picture snapped with this device. So remember, I got here by hitting the play button. I just hit the return button there at the bottom. We go back to the regular infrared camera. And that's pretty much the basic functions of this Thermomaster Thor 001 infrared camera. Now, if we press this button here and hold it, it will turn the infrared camera off. You can see it says it's shutting down here on the display. So it's gonna shut down. And we'll show you how it charges up here real quick. We just open up this flap on the top that we showed earlier. It's got that USB-C port. We're just gonna plug in a USB-C cable here. And you'll see here on the display, it shows it's starting to charge here. You also notice when you have the unit on and it's charging, you'll see this red light down here and the battery will show that it's green with that lightning bolt in it. And this little circle right here, that's the microphone for recording audio. Now Thermomaster sells two versions of this camera. They have this Thor 001 that you see here that has this macro lens that comes with it. They also sell a model, the 002. The only difference is the model 002 doesn't come with this macro lens, otherwise they're exactly the same. What I like about this camera is that it's reasonably priced for everything you're getting here. You could spend thousands of dollars to get the same kind of features you're seeing in this Thermal Master. So really glad they sent this over. It's gonna be great for us to try out uh, and use it here on the channel. So really interested in checking it out. And by the way, you can see that we can tail stand it here. It will stand up on its end. So that's just a quick run through of this Thermal Master Thor 001 infrared thermal imaging camera. Let me know in the comments what you think of this thermal imaging camera. What infrared camera do you use? And I'll catch you in the next video.